Hello and welcome to the Farmer's Kitchen. This is Mrs. Farmer. I'm Mr. Farmer. Wow. We're married and yes, have been for a long time. Yes, we have. A lot of our new viewers are saying, are they, you know, are they related? <laughs> I guess we're related, right? Yes, we are. That being said, as you look in front of us, and he had to guess, what are they making now? You know, because we had some earlier. That's right, delicious. But if you had to look, are they making coleslaw? They've got some pork out. This is from a pig that we processed. That Our we bad grew. pig. Uh, let me tell you a story about the pig real quick. Here's a picture of the pig. Uh, Nikki would hand feed this pig. Yes. And pigs can't see very well. One time, Nikki stuck her hand in there, and the pig thought it was getting a donut. No, you're making excuses for the pig. It was a mean pig, and it decided to bite me one day when I was giving it water. It was a bad pig. It tried to eat you? That's right. It tried to eat me, so I'm done with well, it. Well, as soon as that happened, the pig wasn't quite ready to go to market, but she came back and said, look at my hand. She yes. said, pig's going to market. Yes. And this little piggy didn't come home. That's right. <laughs> that being said, there's the product right there. And it's so nice to be able to raise your own food. If you oh, can't yeah. do that, check around, find you a butcher who, mm -hmm. that you can trust and you know where everything came from. Right. It's, it's nice to know. So that pig that we took to market, this little piggy went to market, this is our pig being butchered. Now let's talk about some of the cuts that are the most popular that you might be familiar with. Now this is the midsection of the pig. So we have what we have here is the rib section and the loin, the sirloin tip here, or the sirloin roast on a pig. We have the spare ribs and the baby back ribs. We also have the pork belly, which would be cut off and made into bacon. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut this in half, separate the loin from the belly. Now in the loin section, this here is the tenderloin, but the tenderloin, you know, it weighs roughly a pound, a pound and a half off really big pigs. You can get up to three pounds, but very small, tender piece of meat. We'll have Mark go ahead and remove this for you. He's just gonna follow the backbone down the loin here. You can see that once he gets it cut, he can basically just pull it away from the seams. It's uh, one of the greatest pieces on the pork. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna remove the rib section from the loin section. So we're gonna start with the rib section here. Now, if we were to take this bone section off here, these would be where you would get your baby back ribs, but we're gonna leave these on for the moment, and we're gonna make uh, bone-in pork chops off of these. And we're gonna show you what a chime pork chop looks like. Does that look pretty good, Tim? Oh, yeah. I know what I'm having tonight. These are your typical bone-in rib chops. Well, a lot of times what you'll see chefs do is they'll take the bit of meat off uh, the end here and kind of make a handle. So the, what a chef would call this is a French chop. So basically what you're doing is you're taking the, the meat off the bone, exposing the bone here. It kind of makes like a little handle here. So what we have left is the loin. What we'll do is we'll take off this bone part right here. We'll take off the chime and we'll make this into a boneless loin here. This is a very difficult thing to do, to be able to get this jagged bone with so many different vertebrae going down the loin out without gouging up the loin. Mark did a great job here. You know, a lot of times what they're doing is they're just cutting a steak off this and frying it up, but we leave this whole. There's just several things that you could do with it. You could cut your boneless chops off here, or you can leave it whole, which is a great thing to do too, and make a roast off of it. The next part may be everyone's favorite part. What we have here is the belly. And the, right now, it's still got the spare ribs attached. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the spare ribs off. He's just gonna take his knife and go around the bone, keeping his knife and blade against the bone so he's not gouging the, uh, the belly, but he's leaving uh, some meat on the spare ribs because no one wants to eat spare ribs with no meat on it. So this is the full spare rib. He's gonna take uh, the bone off here, the breastplate bone, and then he's gonna cut the spare ribs in half this is easier to cook with. Uh, if you have a large family, a full spare ribs is good, but small family, you'd want to cut them in half. That way you can maximize the use of them. How you're gonna make bacon off this is you're either gonna use two methods. You're gonna inject it, or you're going to let it sit in brine for a few days, let it soak up that uh, salt, sugar, whatever your spices may be, and uh, it's gonna come out uh, the same, looking the same, and then you just slice very thin, and that's where you get your bacon from. So coleslaw, what are we doing with coleslaw? We got pork, we got shrimp. Oh, those are some good looking fresh shrimp right there from our buddy Barry. What could we possibly be doing tonight? 
I hope Chinese food. <laughs> There's a lot of different directions we could go. Basically, we've had bad weather, mm -hmm. so we haven't gone out. So we kind of took what we had in the fridge and took stock of this, that, and the other. A lot of this stuff came out of the freezer, mm -hmm. and we decided this is what we're going to have tonight. Now, the first thing we're going to do with our coleslaw is... Doing? Make egg rolls. We're going to make egg rolls. So let's talk about egg rolls. You think that egg rolls are Chinese food. Right. Now they are. But if you really look at the origin of the egg roll, you know, the spring roll goes back forever. Mm -hmm. The egg roll, if you really look it up, there were two men who had Chinese restaurants, two Chinese fellows, okay. had Chinese restaurants. Back in the 20s and 30s was the first accounts of these things out on the West Coast. Now, Chinese American restaurants, there's so much of this food that has been really tailored for Americans. Right. Here's our deep fried spring roll, kind of, sorta. You take cabbage, you take pork, maybe some shrimp, some seasonings, mm -hmm. and you can make an egg roll fairly simply. Delicious, too. You can go to the store and get you some wrappers. Mm -hmm. There's nothing to that. So now that we know the origins of egg roll, let's just make one. Okay. So first thing we got to do is let's get our pork going. And we very simply take about a pound of pork. So the way we did this the other day is we took our pork. And we're going to take a little fresh ginger, and we're just going to grate a little bit of fresh ginger in it, and some fresh garlic. We're just going to press some garlic into that, probably two cloves. So just a little bit of fresh ginger. Now, what is a country kitchen doing serving Chinese food? Eating what we like. <laughs> it's not as hard as it looks. I'll tell you what, you can do so much with a little ginger, a little garlic. There's so many things that you can do in your own kitchen. Now, let's look back at the Asian recipes we've done while, while you're doing this. We have done, gosh, shrimp with pea pods, we've done beef and broccoli, we've done bourbon chicken, pad thai, um, hot and sour soup, crab rangoon. It's easily done. And sometimes you just have a taste for that. Sometimes mm -hmm. that's what you want. And we're gonna show you tonight that it's not that hard to do that. It isn't. There you go. A little garlic press. I find these to be absolutely wonderful. Is that enough garlic for you? Yeah, that's right. plenty. Put a little salt, a little pepper, a little bit of soy sauce. Just a little bit. Let's just for seasoning. And a little bit of sesame oil. Yeah, it's a nice flavor. Mix it up like a meatloaf. That smells good. It does smell good. In a minute, I'm going to give you a list of, of ingredients that I keep around the house that just about any time we want, we can pull something out of the refrigerator, some kind of meat, and turn it into a nice Chinese meal. Yes. I always have some sweet chili sauce some rice vinegar or rice wine vinegar, obviously some soy sauce, some chili garlic sauce, apricot preserves, peanut butter, sriracha, sesame seed, ginger, brown sugar, cornstarch, peanut sauce, and some sesame oil. With these things and maybe some honey, and garlic, you can come up with so many recipes that taste so good. So if you notice, we got a lot of cast iron out. We got to walk here, walk there, skillet here. That's a cast iron kind of night, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is. So we're going to put our pork over here, which smells really good, by the way. It tastes good, the too. The garlic and the ginger. It tastes delicious. A little bit of sesame oil, a little bit of soy. We're heating up our oil over here. I like peanut oil when we're cooking this type of food. So we're going to let that cool for just a minute. Then we're going to combine that with our coleslaw mix. And then we're gonna pop it in our oil and you're gonna see something special. Yeah. Now explain to us, if you will, what you do. You have a little dish here. What's that dish for? I do. I have a little dish right here of, and it's half flour. I have a tablespoon of flour, a tablespoon of water, mm -hmm. equal parts. And that's gonna kind of be our, our paste as we do the it's egg roll. It's your glue. It's my glue, yeah. My glue for the it egg roll. It seals that egg roll shut. Yeah. I'm watching my oil and I don't wanna get that above 350. I'm a, a lot of people say 375. I usually keep it below 350. If I keep it around the 345 mark. So that's where I like it. So let's go ahead and start putting these together. I'm gonna put a couple shrimp in here as well, just for a little extra protein. Now, shrimp don't have to be cooked a whole lot. Most people overcook shrimp. The way we're doing this, it'll be just fine, just enough cooking to get them nice and pink. And that's fresh shrimp. You just can't beat it. Now, it depends on how many people you have. 
how many egg rolls you're going to make. It's going to make a lot of egg rolls. Make, <laughs> we probably won't make all of these, but that's probably that's probably six cups. You know, I can put this of in cabbage, the fridge. Of grated cabbage, yeah. I did that before. Yeah, you can put this in the refrigerator. And just make them, make them all week long. See where we are. We're getting there temperature-wise. So when I was frying that pork up, you'll notice that I cut it up into smaller pieces. You don't want great big hunks in there. All right, where do we go from here? All right, ice cream scoop, because it gets you the perfect amount. Gotcha. Same standardized yes. amount every time. So it kind of gets you the same perfect amount. We're going to start with the corners. I'm going to flip it over. Fold, fold. There we go. And I'm going to use my glue. I'm going to use this, my flour and water for my glue here. There's one. Ready? And there's a beautiful. Those do look good. Homemade, fresh egg roll. Crisp, tasty. Get your little duck sauce. Mm. There's four more. I don't know if anybody knows this or not, but these egg rolls look quite beautiful. I'm excited. This and they taste delish. delicious. These are all the freshest of ingredients. Do we have enough for just the two of us, or should we share with Kelly? <laughs> Maybe Kelly will get one. And you know, we got that huge bowl left that I can put in the fridge, and we can make more tonight, tomorrow, right? We'll just keep making egg rolls. So we're going to set these out on a plate and let them cool. And then we're going to try one. We had some friends over the other night. <laughs> and I made some I made some really good soup. Mm -hmm. But you know what happened? Camille ate all the egg rolls. <laughs> we, ate all, we ate all the egg rolls. Everybody was full. I think you made 20 egg rolls though, so we were, all, we were done. Because they're so good. Once yeah, you get are. started, it's hard to stop. Now, typically, these are supposed to be an appetizer. That's right. But when you have one, two, three, four, five, five, five. They usually give you just one each. So how many we got here? But you know what? It's kind of a guilty pleasure. You know you, know you can eat as many as you want. Mm -hmm. I'm usually excited. You just get one. I'll see if they're cool. Oh, enough. wow. Try. Go ahead. I'm excited. No double dipping. Mm. Mm. Wow, I got some shrimp. Mm. Mm. That is as good as any egg roll I've gotten anywhere. It's really good. Better. I know where everything came from. That's really good. So that's absolutely wonderful. Oh. Mm. I mean, I could seriously eat several of those. That's dinner right and there. And a bite. <laughs> now duck sauce, you can make your own. You can make just apricot jam and some vinegar. Right and mix it up and you got yourself something good. If you want a little heat in it, you can put some red uh -huh. pepper flakes. These are delicious. We should probably save Kelly one or two. Let's go. Kelly have a half of one. All right, sounds All right. good. We went to a restaurant not too long ago and we got some shrimp. Yes. <laughs> I can't name the restaurant. Uh -huh. But the shrimp was sweet and savory. Delicious. And yummy. Kind of fried, it was good. And I decided to try to figure out what they did exactly. You're good at that. So we're gonna call this Tim Tim Shrimp. Ooh, that's a good name. <laughs> I like it's Tim Tim. It's delicious, yes, and let it me is. tell you what, there's there a lot of research that went into this. Tim Tim Shrimp, this is gonna be famous. You're Tim be Tim famous. Shrimp. I like this. And uh, we messed around and experimented, and I think we finally got it yeah. to where we want it. Now there are restaurants that serve this type of thing, they call it different things with yeah. two, two names on the front yeah, end. Yeah, but not Tim Tim Shrimp. This is Tim Tim Shrimp. Yeah, I like Tim Tim. So here's what we're gonna do. <laughs> now, just like we did with Uncle Bob and his frog legs. That's right. He's Scottish. I love Uncle Bob. Uncle Bob is Scottish and he's a wonderful chef. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna soak that in a little bit of buttermilk. So there we go. Beautiful. So that's gonna set about a half hour and through the magic television. A half an hour is oh, up. How yeah. about that? Yeah. Now one thing I'm gonna do, I usually put this on the garlic stuff. I'll put a little garlic mix right here. If you wanna mix that up a little bit, Nikki. Ready? Let it get all acquainted. A little garlic, granulated garlic, in with our shrimp and buttermilk. Then, when you pour that buttermilk off, you can just drink it. <laughs> It'll be good. <laughs> I remember my great-grandmother. She said, Timmy, you want some milk? And so I sat down and she was watching me. And so I, blah, 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 I'm halfway through. I was expecting milk. Mm -hmm. She laughed, she thought it was so funny. I thought she had served me something evil. It's buttermilk. Buttermilk, <laughs> which I like now, but back then it was a shock. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna take all these ingredients, 
you want to take about a third of a cup of the sweet chili sauce. You can buy that anywhere. You can make it yourself. Then we're going to take a half a cup of mayonnaise. Then we're going to take about two teaspoons of chili garlic sauce. Just a pinch of salt. And if you wanted to, you could put a little soy in there. A teaspoon of peanut butter. Two teaspoons of orange marmalade. And let me tell you what. Mmm. Look at that. I taste it. Mm -hmm. I can just eat that. Is that good? Yeah. Our temperature is getting close over here. So what we're going to do, we're going to take our shrimp that's been soaking in buttermilk. We're going to put that in cornstarch. A lot of times with a Chinese recipe, bourbon chicken, you'll use cornstarch. Makes a nice crispy, it makes it very crispy. Now some people will take cornstarch and water, but I like, I like to see the shrimp through there. It adheres to it pretty good, but you'll still see the outline of the shrimp. So as we take this out, you're gonna notice they look kind of like coconut shrimp. That uh, the cornstarch, if you just put it on like we did, it doesn't really cover it evenly. Gives it a nice texture. So that's kind of what that's gonna look like. And when they're done, Yummy. you don't wanna let them get too cool because we're gonna put that directly in the sauce and then serve it over rice. You know, you could order this as a, as a full meal right here. X amount of these with some rice. Oh yeah. Oh, I'm excited. Are you gonna make more or no? That's it? That's all we get? That's all you get? <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's actually 11. 11, so I can have eight. You have one and Kelly have two. Okay, perfect. That's all we need. So here's what let's do. Let's go ahead and take those and toss those in that sauce. All right. And we'll let it be nice and drippy. You know who'd like this? Who? Michael and Sherry. Oh yeah, they would. I have to fix that for them next time they're over here. Can I try one? We have friends who like certain things, and, mm -hmm. and we like to entertain, and this would be perfect for they them. Would like this. Go ahead. I Don't you try it first. Mm. That crunch and that mm. crunch great. Does that remind you of, of a good coconut shrimp? This is good Tim Tim. Except the sauce oh, turns wow. it into something completely different. That is so good. This is a meal itself. These are delicious shrimp. Mmm. 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 Mm. Wow. It's a little bit of a bite to it. I like it. The hot, it's like, it makes you want more. And mm. you can make them hotter. Oh, this is but hot I enough. Where, I know oh. where you're at. It's getting me already. You don't like things real hot. This is hot. But to me, that's like medium. That just proves right there. Wow. They can do anything in your kitchen mm -hmm. with the proper ingredients, spend the time researching, and find yourself the best meal you've ever had right in front of you that you made. And you're going to find out that you don't need to eat out as much. That's right. When the food you make is just as good or better. That's right. And I can have more. You Go get, ahead. I get, double. I get double. I get double. You know what? Kelly said, well, we need a dessert. Well, we still got some hot oil. So we thought about something you made the kids. When they were little. When they were little. Yes. And, which I've had at a Chinese restaurant, and I think you're going to like. Super Quick easy. and simple. Uh -huh. But let's eat this first. Yes. Yummy. We got an oil emergency, we're there. Okay. So what are you doing here? I just got, you know how you buy the little cans of biscuits? They used to be a quarter for biscuits. What are they now, a dollar maybe? And when my kids were little, and you probably did it too, i just take them, sometimes we'd poke a hole, make a donut. But you know what? You, you said, let's make little rum balls. And we're gonna deep fry Kelly those. Kelly said this. Right. Kelly wanted this for, for dessert. You ready? I can throw a few in while we're you waiting. You know what? Is it ready? I've got these in Chinese restaurant. I've got them in an Italian restaurant. Mm-hmm. They're delish. So here. We had oil available, so might as well use it, right? That's right. And then we're going to dip it in sugar and cinnamon. You know what? I haven't made my mixture up yet. I'm just going to do sugar and cinnamon. And you had some great ideas. You were thinking honey and orange peel and just put them on there and then I'll, those look delish. They kind of flip themselves over when it's time. Now this is cheating. This is good. So this is called taking what you got and making something out of it. That's right. That's what we do in our kitchen. And this is our kitchen. 
This is not a set. This is where we cook. This is where we eat. It's where we have food fights. That's right. How's food it? fight. Food fight. Does that look good? That looks wonderful. Sure, it smells delicious. All right. Say when. You're Whenever the, those are ready, put them you're on the there. Expert on this. Oh, they look pretty good to me. Throw them on the pan, and I'll, I'm gonna give you six more. Those look good. Oh. If they're doughy, they're good. So easy, and I'm sure a lot of you have done this. But I remember you used to make donuts, as you'd call them for the kids. Yeah, homemade donuts. Make everybody happy. And I have got something like this at a Chinese restaurant. There's always on the buffet. These are always on the buffet, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and shake them. See how it's just kind of sticking on there? Mm hmm. I sure do. Yum. <laughs> this is the best part of the meal. I like this the best. You know what's funny? Is we had a bunch of, we turned the cameras off and commenced to eating the Tim Tim shrimp, which we had like 75 of each. <laughs> and then Nikki says, I couldn't eat another bite except for. You can always eat a donut. One of your donuts. You can always eat a donut. Why is that? Look how oh, fast it goes. That cook. smells so good. That was difficult, wasn't it? That is really complicated stuff. You know what? Last week you made the chocolate cake, which was really. Yeah. I mean, that was, a, everything was from scratch. Tonight, we wouldn't eat this way every day. But every now and then you gotta just get out the oil and fry some stuff. Those look good. Are they ready to dump? Yeah, I think they're ready. Because a little goo in the middle is good sometimes too. Nothing to it. Oh, that cinnamon smells good with that sugar. Yes, it does. Now, if you were at the Chinese restaurant at the buffet and you saw these, traditionally they would have just white sugar on them. Yeah. But we put some cinnamon but on them. But these are Tim Tim donuts. Tim Tim. Did you so, notice how many are missing over here? Yeah, I did. Kelly, when you turned around to play on your phone, yeah, I no, I heard you right next to me chewing. Oh, did you? When I was looking at my phone. Right. Now I put some honey and some a little bit of orange. You know why? When you're full, do these always? You can still eat a donut. Mmm. Look at the middle. Wow. A little bit of honey. Oh, rub that in some that honey. That is good with the honey. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Delicious. You gotta have your thermometer. You gotta have a candy thermometer. You gotta watch your temperature when you're frying stuff. That's it right. seems like once we get fried stuff, we fry stuff. Oh my goodness, we fried a lot tonight. I'm still in the middle of a donut here. Now these are really good. They're easy. Mm -hmm. And we used what we had. We did. We were digging around in the freezer. We had biscuits. Bad perfect. weather, we didn't want to go right in. And then these are, these are now donuts. That's right, I think that was good. So, if you saw these recipes tonight, remember, it's not hard to make Chinese food in your own kitchen. Mm -hmm. Some ingredients you'll probably have to go buy at the store. But if you want these recipes, where would you find them, Mrs. Warmer? I go to timfarmerscountrykitchen.com. But gazillions of recipes yes, there. Yes, there are. Also, we have a Facebook page, Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen, mm -hmm. but it's extremely difficult to become a part of our page. How do you do that, Mrs. Farmer? I think you hit like. You hit like. And That's all you right. got to do on that page is be nice to each other. That's right. And we have fun. We're yes. kind to each other on that page. No foolishness, as my father used to say. That's right. That's right. And that being said, Mrs. Farmer, <sighs> it's all about good times. Good friends. And really good eats. See you next week on a brand new Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. You need to take these donuts away. No, I'm just going to eat them.